Hey, hey, can you please stop the sad music? No, I can't, I can't do like, it. seriously, what? Sorry. Just give us a second, okay? Tim, don't you know, like, this is a blacksmithing video? We're not talking. What, like, why are we playing this sappy music? The duels, all that stuff is out in the rain. Yeah, you know what? That's too bad. You made that decision. Now suck it up, pull yourself together. Let's get this show on the road. I can't do it. I can't do okay? it. Okay? I'm so sorry you had to see that. Hey, welcome here. So, yep, we're pouring the concrete, the power hammer foundation for Beche Power Hammer is going in today. I'm fired up because this is a monumental moment in building this new blacksmithing shop here in Alberta. <sighs> Thanks for being here. Let's, um, why don't we jump to the office. I'll quickly show you the Power Hammer Foundation drawings, what we're trying to get after, and let's execute it today. Here we go. So this is the original documentation I got when I purchased the hammer. This came from the uh, previous owner who brought the hammer from Germany in 2000. This is all the back and forth as he had it refurbished by Beche before he brought it here to Canada. Look at this. That's a 2000 kg power hammer. Look at these guys, how small they look. Can you imagine the size of that? Wow. This is the uh, blueprint for the foundation. Let me show you a couple things here. So this is the power hammer here. This is grade level, floor level of the shop. And this all in here is concrete. So as you can see here, this is the anvil and it's actually set underneath the ground. The hammer sits flush. The problem with this for me is because I'm such a tall guy is way too low. So last time I did this, I actually made this just a little bit under the ground. I'm going to go even further this time and this is going to be sitting flush on the floor and this is going to be then raised up to maintain that relationship between hammer and anvil so that the ram doesn't overextend and destroy the hammer. Let's jump back to the shop and get working on this foundation. Isn't that crazy how big that hole is? Last time I dug this hole by hand and I am so grateful that I don't have to do that this time. Well, I'm not doing that this time. I'm paying for it, but I'm doing it. Man, that is so deep. So this is gonna be the forging department, kind of like from here back. So and this is the door here. I decided to put Beshe here and it was a hard decision. Um, Typically, I wouldn't be a fan of putting a power hammer in the corner like this because if you have to work something long or access, it's hard to get. In the last seven years, I only once ran a piece long enough that this corner would be an issue. I'm not doing that type of work anyways right now. And um, having the hammer on this side here allows me to have better workflow on the other part of the shop as well as better for filming. I'm trying to deal with production of filming and then production of forging and they can kind of clash a little bit in the workflow. Anyways, I should pour both Beche and Nazel's foundation right now. I'm not gonna do Nazel because I'm actually not gonna set it up right now because I don't have enough money to do the foundation. I don't need it as much as Beche. I need one hammer really. The second one is very complimentary and helps, but it's not as critical. Pretty much all the form work here, we gotta do a little bit more. That's gonna be moving over the hole. So right now the thing is sitting level, perfect height. So this would be the top of the floor when the shop is finished, which lines up with that board over there to the bottom side of it. And then this part here is the raised part of the power hammer. And then I actually have to mount this whole thing securely down. It would just float away or drift away.
So now we're ready to turn our attention towards the rebar and the bolts that are gonna be holding this bad boy down. But I cut my square pipe inch and a half short. Good job, Tim. Gonna figure that out. Here it is all finished up. There's uh, something about uh, putting those bolts in the concrete and then pouring the concrete around it that makes you a little nervous. At least I get nervous about it. Like, oh, it's gotta be just perfect. And when I make a stupid little mistake like that, like an inch off, it doesn't help to strengthen my confidence, you know? I didn't go nuts with the rebar. I don't even know if you really need it. It's such a big chunk. But anyways, rebar's in. I might put a little bit more in. Got two more lengths if I have time, but I'm gonna get on to uh, more pressing things. Check out what just arrived, concrete. Check it out, we got this, hey? Pretty stoked on how this is all coming together. Had a, a little bit of a scare because the bolts started to lift, which is not good, but I was able to stand on top of them and they look good and true now. So we're just smoothing up here and I think we got this thing beat. I'm just gonna let this sit probably for I'll probably let it sit for a week before I knock the forms off. Once the forms are off, I still gotta let it sit for another 30 days or 30 days from now when we poured it. And then uh, I'm gonna put on some uh, leveling epoxy right on the top because I know no matter how good we try with that, nothing's ever gonna work out perfect and I'm kinda tired of that. I've done that on the last two power hammers. I'm just saying that as a disclaimer so it doesn't look like I've made a mistake when we get to that point. So it's been a week now, and I just started pulling off the forms, the first two boards, and I got a huge, huge mistake. This is super bad. Look at this. <sighs> Other side's pretty good though. Totally should not have cheaped out. I should have got a vibrator. Well, let's get the rest off and then see how everything looks and we'll go from there. Here it is without the uh, forms on. So this here is the floor. And then this is the part that I've made raised up now. And then obviously these are the bolts where the hammer bolts down. So this here, which shows my poorness of being able to pour concrete well, well, that really shows it. Let's ignore that, ignore that for a second. This is what I was hoping to take out with the leveling epoxy and the leveling epoxy can take in about half an inch out of tolerance, let's call it like that. So the hammer sits right in here. So I'm just gonna do epoxy. So in thinking about this here, even though I'm totally bummed out about it, embarrassed to show this on YouTube, um, I think it might not be actually as bad as I'm thinking it originally was gonna be because the hammer only sits in here on this section. This doesn't matter. And um, the leveling epoxy, like I said, can only take about half an inch 
out of play. So I might get some of the epoxy that you would be embedding anchors into concrete because that stuff is so good and just put it in here, build it up essentially, and then use the leveling epoxy. And then when it's all bolted down, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. Even though like that's the best fix I can have. If you have any ideas, I'm open to it, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. You know, it sits on wood as well, so that'll help level it all out, so. Pretty cool looking though, right? Pretty cool looking. But make no mistake, hey, it's a lot of work setting these bad boys up, but. Pre-orders for the cross beam hammers are open on my website. Pre-orders for the axes and hatchets, that's the 1919 Blackhawk hatchet, Blackhawk axe, those are open on my website. And also the collaboration wallet with Colin from Elibi Leather Goods. He has caught up on his orders and has open slots. So if you want to get your Keep the Forge Lit wallet, make sure to check out his website. I'm going to link mine and his below this video so you can take a look at that. I super appreciate you watching. Thank you to all of you who are coming along on this fun adventure and stressful of setting up the new shop. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you would consider doing that. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then, keep the forge lit, hey? Over and out. Check it out, yesterday we put in the new power to the shop. Got a new pole and supply hooked up. 200 amps right here. Look at the wire size. This goes to the shop. Big wires, because we need a lot.